Also, Vincent Tassefua is joining us right now on Zoom. He's a member of parliament for the Otafu constituency. He's also a private legal practitioner. Um, Tassefua, good morning. Good morning, Alfred. Great. Now, so based on the, and, and I'll stay with you, Tassefua, based on the, the explanation and analysis by Dr. Justice Shrem Sai this morning, the, that stay of execution, as was directed by the Supreme Court to the Speaker, was essentially mute and of no effect because that what or what this, the Supreme Court was seeking to, to stay had already been executed and, and done with. So really, what were you seeking to stay? Reason why you didn't want the Speaker's decision to be carried out or implemented? Well, um, that is an interesting analogy uh, from my respected colleague. Uh, but before then, um, let me attempt to um, highlight one or two things that he said and probably even expand the scope of the examples that he gave. Um, I can appreciate um, the point of um, interpretation that he put on the Article 97 and um, the examples that he gave. But I think that one or two things um, that probably was lost on him was what the constitution of the new patriotic party says uh, with respect to the forfeiture. Um, there is a process um, to which a candidate uh, becomes, or if you like a person becomes an official candidate of the new patriotic party. Uh, for example, in my constituency, the party constitution says that if I have to be um, a candidate on the ticket of the new patriotic party, there should be primaries, and the primaries will have to be contested for by all individuals who so desire to contest. Now, issue of timing, issue of timing, very critical. Um, we had our primaries in January, so um, did all the other candidates uh, like Cynthia Morrison, uh, Kodja Sante, and what have you also had their um, primaries. So if you have your primaries in January, like we had ours in January, and after the primaries, you are a certain MP and you lost your primaries. What that means is that in the next parliament, you cannot be in parliament on that ticket, on that particular ticket. But if you want to get to parliament, again, it means that you may have to take another strategy. The point I'm trying to, take, uh, to make is that these persons did not show any indication by way of their actions or inactions to leave the party on which they had earlier contested on to be in parliament after the supposed primaries. Put it friendly. Cynthia Morrison or Kodjo Asante did not say that they are no more part of the party to which they contested on earlier to have entered parliament. But because elections is a process, and when I say it's a process, the Electoral Commission per its constitutional uh, instrument um, will have to open a process for which anybody who wants to contest um, an election to be part of the next parliament will have to follow. And that process started about last month. So I filed officially um, at the Electoral Commission last month. So what that means is that per the actions and inactions of these persons, for the past six, seven, eight months, they have decided to stay in parliament as far as the rest of their term is concerned, to still stay with the party to which they came to parliament with. That is a distinguishable aspect that I want the Honourable side to see. It is issue of timing. So if these persons, by their actions or inactions, had said that right after the primaries, I am no more going to do business with the party of, on, which, on whose ticket that I came to parliament. Well, with. okay. I'm not going, I'm not well, going to do it, it, Based on the analogy but, that you have just done, in the instance of the mm -hmm. Formina member of parliament right all of this that you have just said he, he really did he make a decision that he was not going to do business with the party he did not 
right? No, you but see, yes, that and, is but, but then again, you, the you 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 went ahead and expelled him, and you wrote to the speaker to declare the seat vacant. So yes. in this particular instance, they have also not said that they are not going to do business with the side. That's your side in the house. So why then do you think that in the case of this one, there is merit in it, but then in the case of the Formina MP situation, which has become the precedence for this one, there is really no merit in it? No, you see, it is distinguishable from this particular instance because in the case of the Formina MP, the Honorable SMS case, there was a tussle between himself and the party. At the time, the party felt that the Honorable Esiama should not contest, or if he has decided to contest, the tussle was that, okay, if you have decided to contest, then you are no more part of our party. Of course, as the Honorable Sai interpreted, mm -hmm. the forfeiture is different from you going to be expelled. And indeed, I agree with him when it's, the party constitution says that you have been forfeited. Mm -hmm. But my point is that in the case of Cynthia Morrison, in the case of Koja Sante, from January 2024, after the primaries, their actions and in the inactions in parliament have pointed to a point whereby they are still doing business with the MPP majority. But I am saying that. But the, the former the MP was still doing was, business with you. The former MP was still doing business with the MPP, even after de deciding to go independent, is it not? Yeah, but, but the difference is that the party had written to the Speaker of Parliament that by the actions and inactions of the former MP, he is no more part of the new patriotic party. So that's what I'm saying that this, this instance, there hasn't been any, any tussle or there hasn't been any disagreement. And in any case, the persons themselves over and over has indicated that I want to finish my but, term. But, but what does the party's What's constitution, the NPP, the NPP constitution itself, what does it say about the actions of these persons, even if the party does not write to, to them. Because I'm looking at the details of your constitution right now. No, 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 no. To, be, to be honest with you, so, I agree with the forfeiture. To be honest with you. No, right, so then what's that. your argument exactly? No, so my argument is that they have forfeited, they have forfeited their membership with the new patriotic party. Yes. But my point is, these people were elected on that ticket or on the MPP ticket for a specific term of four years. Well, but the Formula MP was also years. elected for a specific term yes, of but that's four what I'm years. Saying that. Yes, but that, that's what I'm saying that there has been or there was a tussle between the MPP as a party and the Formula MP at the time. The MPP felt that at the time we needed to write a letter to the Speaker of Parliament to expel him from Parliament or mm -hmm. to stop doing business with the new patriotic party at the time. That is a different scenario. Um, mm -hmm. Well, for issues of consistency, I may want to agree with you to some extent. But the point is, the Constitution itself is supreme. And you see, that is where issues of interpretation comes in. And maybe if I may want to follow on the, the question that you really asked me um, initially. See, the MPP majority went to court, that is the Supreme Court, to invoke the original exclusive jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret Article 97. Anybody can put his interpretation on it. And that is why I'm happy that a businessman has gone to court to trigger the Article 99 of the 1992 Constitution. Probably it has not been tested before. There's an opportunity whereby you have a high court declaring a seat vacant as per Article 99. But the point I'm trying to make is that it was within the right of the new patriotic party to invoke the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret Article 97, especially when we anticipated and suspected that there is going to be an action on the side of the minority. Because they had already indicated on their political platforms especially the Honorable Harry Nedris, indicated that when Parliament reconvenes, the NDC minority is going to be the majority. And so it is within my right, it is within the right of every Ghanaian, 
if you think that your fundamental human right is likely to be contravened, you can go to the Supreme Court or you can go to the High Court to enforce that fundamental human right. So, Alfred, the, 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 the issue here is the MPP majority had a different opinion from what um, Dr. Sai is saying. Our opinion, our opinion was that there should be an interpretation whether these people have indeed vacated their seat because of what the Speaker of Parliament said. The Speaker of Parliament gave a ruling, and I have had the occasion to um, um, say that the Speaker of Parliament at the time, even though my book did it in 2020, um, could have hesitated in, in declaring this seat um, vacant. But the MPP um, has a different opinion from what Dr. Sai is saying. Well, that's what... Uh...